They go on to win it 82-66 in advance to the round of 32 for the fourth straight season. They will play number eight LSU on Monday. Michigan gets back to winning ways after coming into this one, losing two of three. The 19th NCAA tournament win since 2013. That is the most in the nation, surpassing Duke, Kentucky, and UNC. They were minus 4,500 on the money line. Texas Southern does cover. Remember, uh, the point spread here, 24 and a half. So Texas Southern does pay out here for the over hits at 148. It was 141 and a half. Our Jamie Erdahl with Michigan head coach Juwan Howard after the game. Coach, you have a storied basketball career, but this was still your first NCAA game coaching as a head coach of Michigan. How did it feel today? It felt great. <laughs> you know, it's no different than any other game to me. Uh, but yes, I know this is a very high level moment right now. You know, something that we all look forward to, players and coaches and managers, to be a part of the you know, March Madness. Uh, something that we missed last season, but getting the opportunity to play this year, all our players are excited about the moment. At halftime, you mentioned how important your culture was for guys to step up for Isaiah Livers. How did some of those players take care of business for you today? Oh, man, we, we had a, a really good bench production from Zeb Jackson. You know, Shandy, unfortunately for him, is in foul trouble. Austin Davis came in, gave us a lift, then got in foul trouble. But Terrence Williams was very solid for us. You know, he's as steady as they come. But collectively, our guys understand that, you know, Isaiah is a big, large part of our team success. But at the same time, you know, we have to, of course, all hands on deck. Every man steps up. And I'm just so happy that our guys believe in that culture and understands that guys to step on that floor gotta be ready to play will you tell us how you plan to manage your hopeful deep run here how much do you focus on this game as opposed to looking ahead to lsu on monday well uh, we take one game at a time until you just said it i did not know who we were playing next but now that i know we're going to dive into the film get ready for the game prep and uh and i look forward to that matchup thank you coach for your time see you monday thank you thanks for having me so big opening tournament win for Juwan Howard as the Michigan head coach. And you take a look at the past two opening round games as the one seed for Michigan. And Juwan Howard was a player when they won by 31 versus Coastal Carolina in 1993. And now in 2021, he's their coach as they win by 16 over Texas Southern. And let's now welcome in CBS Sports College basketball analyst Chip Patterson. Chip, I guess I'll ask you, did this win by Michigan restore your confidence in them as a one seed? As a one seed, sure, but it's still not the same team as they are with Isaiah Livers in the lineup. You know, we've thrown the records around on CBS Sports HQ. They are uh, so much better with their senior leader, somebody who, when he went down with an injury, was leading the team in minutes played and second in points. Having him around, not just around the program to help with the culture, but on the floor is absolutely huge. But there were two things that stood out to me, Jeremy. The first was late in the first half, a 17 point Michigan lead all of a sudden became a nine point Michigan lead. Texas Southern going on a little bit of a run, really putting some pressure on the Wolverines. And then Michigan responded uh, with an electric run to push the lead back out to about 18 points at halftime. And so I like to see this Michigan team get tested. You know, Texas Southern coming off the first four win, uh, it would have been even more concerning if everything was a breeze. And so to see them respond and to see them sort of, you know, take a little jab in the fight, I think was a fantastic thing for the Wolverines long-term prospects. The second thing that stood out to me was the guard play because as I look at what Isaiah Livers did well, he was a great facilitator as well as a scorer, somebody who was very fluid within the offense and what they got specifically out of Mike Smith, 18 points, five assists, Eli Brooks, 11 points, five assists, Franz Bogner, who, you know, can play that wing, almost six, nine guard position, nine points, six assists, these are the guys that are setting up everyone else in the offense. And so as I not only think about the long-term future and what Michigan needs in order to be able to continue to be effective both offensively and defensively, but in the immediate future with LSU coming up and when you've got that dynamic trio of Cam Thomas and Trendon Wadford, Javante Smart, 
Michigan knows it has Hunter Dickinson down low. That is a steady, that is that is a presence. It's a known quantity. But if they can get those guards to be able to play at a high level against those elite LSU players, then I think that it's going to be a great sign uh, for being able to advance to the Sweet 16 and still contend for a national championship. So now they come up against the eight seed LSU. Both teams won their opening games by 16 points. Lots of people really liked what they saw from LSU on this day, though, Chip. So now when you look at this, matchup are you shading towards Michigan or are you like in LSU when you look at it I like LSU uh, I think that that was a team that got put out of its comfort zone by St. Bonaventure early in that game I mean J Jeremy didn't it look like it was a, a typo on the score bug to just see four to four with multiple minutes left in the game especially I mean minute into the first half especially for a team like LSU with that kind of firepower uh, I just think that for LSU to be taken out of its comfort zone then be able to take control of the game and then uh, really lead and run away with it the final score does not really justify the kind of test that LSU got, you know, where Michigan ended up not covering the spread, but really, you know, keeping Texas Southern at arm's length for much of the game. This was a game that LSU had to go and win, and I got a lot of confidence in seeing them be able to do that. Obviously, some of the LSU excitement comes off that SEC tournament run where they go all the way down to the final moments of the championship game against Alabama. But this will be a test for Michigan's offense. Those guards have to show up and play at a high level on both ends of the floor because I think the pace of this game is going to end up really requiring the Wolverines be able to get up into, you know, 70, 80 points, which is great for us, right? Like, I mean, we get to just grab our popcorn and watch a terrific second round ball game. LSU is capable of beating Michigan. I, I think I'm leaning the Tigers' way in an 8 1 upset. Well, it should be a good game no matter what between those two teams. Chip Patterson, thanks for hopping on with us uh, to talk about Michigan's win in the opening round. And there's the matchup versus LSU. It'll be their first meeting in the NCAA tournament. Michigan seeking a fourth street straight Sweet 16 appearance. LSU seeking back-to-back -back Sweet 16 appearances. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.